Treasurer by committee. One person is going to be the treasurer, the other, they're changing the name. It, it, it's, one is the signer, co signer. Co -signer. Yeah. But basically, what it is is the, the treasurer is not going to have your P card anymore. It's the co signer who's going to actually have the P card and have to do the paperwork. It's, well, you're all going to have to take the transfer. Otherwise, uh, or else funding. you will not be able to vote on funding. Okay? And you will also have to complete your ethics training or you will not be able to vote on funding. Within the last two years. Yeah. Within the, so if you take it within right. the last two years, it's still Okay. Happening. So now let me let me move on. That's just an overview. Yes, You'll, you should all be getting stuff. You should be reading the W Parallel Asian Glass that comes out every week. Yeah, and looking, you need to look at it because there's an incredible amount of good information in that you need to know, you know, including when these trainings are online, because it's a webcast. Okay, so, all right. Um, with the budget, right now you're in a uh, holding period from June 14th until July 7th or 6th. You can't spend any money. There's no money. Okay, this is for them to catch up on all pay for. Um, in order to start spending money, you have to submit a budget, which is what you're going to work on tonight. It's a budget for the year. Hello. Um, and they also want you to come up with a strategic plan, which basically, I mean, the, the real way to do this is you set your strategic plan, which is, and Terry's going to go into it a little more depth. What is it we want to accomplish this year? Then how are we going to accomplish it? And then your budget reflects what you're going to do. Okay? So you don't just have a budget. There's some thought behind it. Okay? Um, so for example, and this is something I really hope you don't do, uh, we want to give away three quarters of our money in NPGs because it's important for us to give the taxpayer money back to the community. If that's your strategic plan, your budget is going to reflect that. You're going to have three quarters of your budget under MPG. Okay? And again, I'm not recommending that. That's just a yeah. Okay? So, um, uh, and this, you really need to accomplish this tonight so that your board can vote on it at your next meeting, and then you can start spending. Or else you're not going to be, you're going to either have to have special meetings to get it through because you cannot spend money until this is sent in. Okay? We will get the... Okay. Um, I'm going to yeah. give a reference. So Terry's going to explain very quickly what the, the strategic planning process is and how it works and then try to walk you through it. Okay, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now let's take a step back. Have you guys ever talked about what you've already done in your community? Or as a group, not as different committee level. Yes, sir. Well, it was interesting because of, you know, I was waiting in line to get in the board of bed the other day. There was a stakeholder in line with me, and we were having this conversation about what you be spending money on. Uh -huh. And so we we already were having a dialogue per se in line uh -huh. um, on what we'd be targeting. Right. So we, can I give an example? Should we get five hundred dollars for a karate class, or should we really get a big rate of return on out for that? So well, that, that's one of the things we actually look at is the ROI, the rate. Yes. Mm -hmm. See what we're we're getting for our money, the bang for the buck, as some people say. Have you guys talked to your stakeholders? Have you ever had a town hall to be able to extract from your stakeholders what they'd like to see? No. Okay. Well, those are things that are clear. Stakeholders are aware that we've got the money available through the communities and that our effort is pretty well. Well, one of the things is that when you look at a strategic plan, you have to get that 40,000 foot view of what you want to get done for the community. You know, is, is it one of special programs that need to be implemented in the community? Is it bringing in more police? Is it bringing in more fire, more social programs? You have to look at the dynamics of your community to see exactly what you want to do. Has that conversation ever been done? 
Yep. Okay. Well, we can work with that. You know, it all takes that first step. All journeys start with that first step. So we know one of the things. So what are you guys' strengths? So? You're all here. Now, that's the first strength. That's a huge strength. There's a lot of community support in terms of volunteerism for that is, that is a strength. Way. We have a lot of, uh, you know, just I've seen that a lot. Like the CERT, also the public safety. There's a lot of community volunteerism. Okay, sure. that's fantastic though, because I've been to other communities where you have the neighborhood council where they can't even get poor. So to have you guys here and wanting to really interact with the community is a very big strength. Now, what are some of the weaknesses that happen in the community? Outreach. Outreach? Mm -hmm. in, in that, your is there a technology divide, or is it just that nobody's hearing the message, or we're not sending the message out? All three. All three. Yeah. Currently, we started the, the website on Facebook. So that's very right. recent. But I guess I personally had never heard of the neighborhood council until last year. Okay. And a lot of the community that I spoke to throughout various regions, they don't they don't even know that we exist. Okay. Is that because you haven't interacted with them or the form we're not gonna talk about the former board. Forget about that, because we're not gonna play a blame game. We're gonna look how can we move forward with this though? So it sounds like now Oh, you're right. Excuse me, I, I apologize. I came in late. I'm, I'm listening to you. I have no idea who you are and what you're talking about. So could you kind of introduce yourself to me? I'm Bob Marquette. Though. Okay, I'm Terrence Combs uh, with C4C Councils for Councils. I'm also the president of the Los Angeles Neighborhood Council Coalition. I'm also a board member on the South Robertson Neighborhood okay, Council. Okay, nobody. Okay. <laughs> that, that's the best though. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and one, one, one of my strengths in working with neighborhood councils is to use strategic planning and also funding because I am a treasurer for my own uh, neighborhood council. Plus also I was working with the staff, uh, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment to help work through to get the new funding. Uh, I was actually with the training of the staff yesterday uh, during the day to be able to look at what they were going to do for funding. And there are things that as a neighborhood council, I saw that needed to be changed. So I've been working with them. Because in the beginning, they actually were not going to have us have a debit card. And I convinced uh, Grace that you need to call Wells Fargo and tell them, issue debit cards, but don't issue PIN numbers. Because if you don't have a PIN number, that means you can't go to the ATM and take money out. So that took care of that. So now we have we have a debit card. So that, that's kind of my history in that. I've been with Neighborhood Council since uh, 06. Um, so that's what it is. And we're here to work with your community and also with your Neighborhood Council to be able to develop a strategic plan, a plan on how to, which it sounds like, the 800 pound gorilla in the room is outreach, correct? Yes. And that you would want to get more outreach to your community so that they can see not only the benefits, but also what the charter mandates for neighborhood councils, which is what? Nobody knows? Uh, part of it is to make the government more effective to our community, to be a conduit between us anyway. and your stakeholders to City Hall. And if you've ever seen what Lank's been doing lately, we've been really pushing, actually one of your motions is, is about transparency for the city hall with, with the neighborhood councils and the stakeholders, all four million of them. Because if, if you really look at, we're the ones that represent all the stakeholders, so, uh, as a neighborhood council. So that's what we're looking at to do. So at, as we say, there's an outreach issue. How do we get more involved with the community? How do they know more about what we do so that we can help them. Whether it's as simple as getting a pothole filled in front of their house, all the way to maybe there's major issues, the quality of life issues that we want to take care of. I was, I was the chair for the uh, outreach committee on my last, when I was on the board. Uh -huh. Now, one of the things that really helps, in this community, a lot of people here don't have internet, or okay. computers. Um, and so, you know, they're not, they're not going to be receiving any e blasts or email. Right. But once in a while, what we would do is do uh, a flyer and send it by the walking man or someone to right. every, every household. And what it does is you're, 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 you're promoting what you do the event. At the same time, you're promoting the neighborhood council. Right. And that's what questions I asked was about the technology divide. Is there a technology divide in this community? Now, I think walking man is great. The problem with walking man, it doesn't introduce your board members to the community. 
So what you may want to do is on a Saturday instead of cleanup is to target neighborhoods to actually pass out flyers and let the people know there that we're from the neighborhood council, we're here to help you. How can we help you? That's one of the things that maybe you guys, we've done it successfully in our neighborhood. And we have a large neighborhood, so um, it, it works very well. But we used to use Walking Man, but for some reason there was always a disconnect because it was like, oh, it's just another flyer, another trash. Well, we, we got a large turnout. I mean, that works. Well, yeah, it, it, it works does, works. but is it the most effective, though? And does it the, the, the other The other way, we try, to, we try to get every board member to go to their region, just like you were saying, right. introduce themselves at the same time, and, you know, give them a flyer right. or a brochure about the neighborhood council. Mm -hmm. But that's providing every board member participate. It's very difficult. That's too. part of the commitment, though. I mean, you ran for the board. Why did you run? I mean, for me, it was I ran because I wanted to help my community, get to know my community, and bring more services into our community. So that's what, what I was looking at for that. But the strategic plan, so we would focus on outreach, and I think also you gotta look at dividing up, because it's really hard when you look at, oh, it's all of LA32, and that's what, 45,000 stakeholders according to the application? That was 45,000. 45,000, right? That's 60, yeah. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to chunk them up into smaller groups. But now, do you guys represent, because it would been clarified in this packet you gave me, are you each representing a separate area, or? Yeah, there is at large, and then there's uh, representative right. regional. Right. Okay. So those are things that we can help you with to do that. So one thing we would look at is is that we do outreach. Who do we target though? And it sounds like there'd be two groups. There'd be the ones who actually do tweet and who use Facebook, and I'm sure there's a lot of them in the community. And then there's the other half, which may be first generation people where their second gen their kids may do the tweeting, they may do the Facebook, they may do that. But mom and dad don't do that because it's like, oh no, it's it's a computer. And we have that in our neighborhood too. Or there's a language barrier. We have that also. So our neighborhood is very similar to yours where there's a language barrier, except ours is with Farsi and your guys is Spanish. Okay. So I, I understand that. So I'll be able to help you guys to be able to cross that. But you really have to look at two different groups, ones that have the technology and those that don't, which would be the, the flyers that would, would really help with that. If I did, just make them But part oh. of your strategic plan also needs to include what kind of outreach needs to be done on the flyers and web and all right. that. Well, we're we're going to so. get to that, but I'm just trying to, to give an overview of you know, what it is you guys want to target. Sounds like outreach. Right. And then what do you want to do with the outreach? Do you want to get them so they're more participating in the neighborhood council? Do you want to bring quality of life services to those people? What is it that, because what generally happens is you have a council member who, who's over a vast area, mm -hmm. and some areas just don't get part of that dollar when it comes to services. And that's one of the ways that the neighborhood council is able to direct those dollars into the areas that need it the most. Well, I think, you know, that is all fine, but you know the vehicle and how you get that route outreach mm -hmm. to the folks Absolutely. is what is going to make it or break it in this community because they tried, we tried before, you know, information, flyers, and you know, uh, for elections. A great example was elections. How many people ended up going to elections? 200 people out of 60,000. So, right. so that is, you know, that the key piece here is not only listening to what the stakeholders want but making sure that we bring that piece in a smaller chunk so that they can talk to us. Because if we try to do a forum, you know, if we're gonna get 50 folks to show up, it's the same 50 folks who are going to have the same thing to say. So, right. so the, the way this basically is gonna work is, I, I don't wanna spend an hour on the theory of this. All right. You have your big vision, which is the outreach. Your, your, well, your big vision is, reach out to your stakeholders and represent them to the city. Okay, that's your vision. Um, the next thing is then we'll use outreach. So let's say we want to get out into the community more and let people know what we're doing. That's, you know, that's a goal. How are you going to do that? Now you get into how, well, we're going to quantify this by saying, uh, we have 12 months, we want to have a minimum of 12 events where we're going to have a table at the event where we're going to have our information and people can come and stuff. Okay? So now you have a plan for it 
and where this works into your budget is, do we have a table? Oh, we need to buy some table. Do we have material to hand out? Oh, no, we have that money for printing. So all of that works its way down into your budget in order to accomplish what you've been doing. Does that make sense? And then the last piece of it is the evaluation, is how you quantify it. So at the end of the year, you can say, well, we doubled the size of our mailing list. Great. So that would be one of your things. We want to double the size of our mailing list, and we will, we will check to see what that is at the end of the year. Or we double the size of the average people that come into our meetings. Because that's something you should work on, is getting more people. See what I'm saying? So this is an organized process to getting to where you want to go. You state where you want to go. The same we want to do outreach is nebulous. You know, I mean, I, I, do, I don't know if I did this at your training, but I said, who's responsible for outreach? Everybody. I didn't do it, okay? You're responsible. You're responsible. You're responsible. Because as soon as you say everybody, oh, well, you know, the other 19 people, then, you know, I can work on it. You are each responsible for outreach, okay? So again, this gives you a way to make that happen. You're looking at it, and you can, you know, through the course of the year, you can look and see where we're going. And it can change. The strategic plan is not written in stone. It can be modified. Your budget's not written, which you know. It's not, you know, and one of the things you need to look at, which I will look at, is how are we helping our goal by getting our money away? Is that really helping our goal? It's helping people in the community, but is that what our goal is? Okay, so these are all things you know. So Terry, why don't you, you share uh, the I have a suggestion. My name is Elena Jane. I belong to the Rose Hills Association. Uh, oh. Outreach, okay. My, uh, I want to suggest, since not all households have computers and be able to go on Facebook, I think it would be nice if we have like a big screen that will flash whatever details, upcoming events and all that. Central point, I don't know, maybe, you know, El Surino right there in the corner or Monterey Road right there in the corner. Electronically, and people passing by, community people, they'll read it. And, and you don't have to do And that's it. certainly a possibility. Yes, you know, the more, the more important one though is, okay. If I come to you and I say, can you come, can you, if we get you information about what's going on in the community, can you help us distribute it to your membership? That's what they may ask. How yeah. is your membership? You know, can we have access to your mailing list or, right or now, can you distribute uh, for us? Right now, around 20 to 30 people coming to our yeah, no, But how many are part of your HOA? Well, we got at least about 500. See, and how do you distribute it? Well, they come to our meetings and we also have a lot of emails to that we're using that process. Okay. But what we like to see is what the LA 32 and C side. I know there's many communities around here and that if each individual has their representative for their committee or their community, then after they pick up here, they can share. Mm -hmm. And that extends the Absolutely. And that's what we do as part of the strategic plan. One is to reach out and to find out. Thank you is to reach out and find out how many HOAs there are, how many block clubs there are, how many, because that's the first thing you need to do is identify who's in your area. And that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, part of it's the people that have technology, part who don't, but then also what are the groups that make up the community? Uh, you know, is it a homeowner association? Is it a block club? Is it a community council that happens to be within your boundaries, which happens? So those are the things we look at as a neighborhood council to start partnering with. We gotta create that partnership and say, we're gonna share information, will you share it with your state or, or with your members? Correct. And that's what we look at for that. And that's something that, as part of the strategic plan, would be part of the communications and the outreach. Do you have communications to share? Yes, he's not here today, but Okay, that's very important. No, he's here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so th those are the things that we look at to be able to help and it would be more of a push, be able to push the information to your group and you would then disseminate it to your members. Do right? you have questions? Yeah. We would ask for your help. We have a lot of time to just preach to the choir. 
Uh, so from where I sit, I'd like to hear your suggestions on how to overcome apathy. So that's what I think we were to go on. From the people stakeholders or the people hear about it, they know about it. We've been around for ten or yeah. years now. So, so Okay, well I'm I getting mixed like messages here though. And things like that you find out. I, I, I don't think with all due respect to everybody here that we've got really any reason. I mean if you're trying to get active in the community and you don't find what's going on why you don't know Well, that's one of the things that I heard, though, was that some of the new board members never knew about the neighborhood council until the outreach for the elections. Is that yeah. it? Okay. So that's one of the things that we need to look at is how we can bridge that gap to be able to get it where people are known more about it. Because regardless of where you're, you're at or who they are, they always have an issue, whether it's trees need to be trimmed, whether they have a problem with a neighborhood and they don't know where to turn. That's what I see nine times out of 10 in all the people. How do you do this? Or maybe it's just that they, they're doing other things and they're not, don't have time to get involved in this, so. Um, yeah, well, well you have 60,000 stakeholders, so if, it, if you could reach 6% of them, 10% of them, that's huge. Well, reaching them and bringing them in. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, it may not always be to attend your meetings, but if you guys have a newsletter? No. That's one of the things. People like information, they like to look at it at their own time, whether it's digital and being sent out through your email or as a printed version. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're talking about communication, and I think part of here is doing a service here by making sure the meetings don't, because a lot of times, especially now with technology, people can't come to say the meeting like right now. Mm -hmm. so it's nice to have something put up on YouTube that people can look at. And and come back. Is it on your website too? You know, I think we, we talked about incorporating YouTube on our website now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because remember, do you want them to go to YouTube or do you want them to go either through your website first and then link to YouTube? That's right. You want you want to do it where you're the first you one. Like the little click clicks, right? Exactly. And it's not only where simply say, oh, well, we make money by each click. It has that to do with that. It has to do with where are people going first to get their information. Exactly. Are they going to the LA Times for local issues? Or are they going to the LA32 website to be able to see what's going on? And that's where you, see, you have your website up. How much information is on there for saying about that? Yes. Okay. It's all the website and stuff. Just for example, a mere example, I know we were talking about that in the beginning. Right. We have been had since the inception in 2005, we've had over a million individual hits on the website. Mm -hmm. So you see something like that, what's built up a lot more of trans transferred into a paper account on our age in terms of you want those people to start identifying, come to the website, and start identifying those individual viewers, and then that's how you're growing your route in front of And that's also where you also do the partnership. We've talked about the partnerships with the different neighborhoods, but also the partnerships with the different blogs, City Watch, the other times that on City Watch or on did your blog have it where you can put LA32 link on your website? We're one of the things that we're talking about. This is um, is a complete matter of fact. We're talking about Ron K about this on Ron K. You know, Ron K. Yeah, I know Ron K. About, we were talking about this on Monday. Give me a call, and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with him, with him, and, and talk about revamping. You know, there's you know, way we cover things, but I think also too. We also, to draw people from the various communities throughout the city, we need to be more inclusive in bringing those community issues and bringing people who want to partake in the dialogue so they can have a, a venue to partake in that dialogue. So that's one of the things that we're talking about revamping is making sure that, like City Watch, you know, you have your, your primary rights, so exactly. okay, like Humphrey Bill and so on. Right, right. Okay. But on the other hand, too, I think it's, uh, you also got to broaden your regional outreach, okay? Absolutely. I mean, you need know, to get a microcosm, you get little issues that are small, that are germane to a specific community, but are just as passionate when it comes to dialogue as they are about discussing big issues in the city -wise. So, I mean, I've got to be able to get What that. I found out is one issue in one neighborhood is generally another issue in another neighborhood. It's right. the same problem. Right. It's nothing new. We're not reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's the same problem throughout the city. Mm -hmm. you know? We're, we're what, 80, 80, 80 suburbs looking for a city? Oh, yeah. And, and that's what's happening. Jack Webb, right? And, and that's why we're trying to create this. It's just like, I, you have a website? Uh, we're putting one together. Okay, 
as they put one together, is you put their link on your website, and they would put LA32 so that there's the back and forth communication. There. Any other homeowner associations or block clubs, see if they have it, or if they have a Facebook page, link it to them and their Facebook page and link it to you. Now we got the cross partnerships. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to reach out to people because people that are in your community may never go to LA32, but if it's on your website, they'll go, oh wow, what is this? And they'll click on it. And then put a counter on there also to see mm -hmm. where, where your clicks are coming from and how many clicks there are. Yeah. So you're building that dynamic, but here it is, you're getting the outreach. People are knowing, oh, this is LA32. This is what they do. I know like with, because our neighborhood council is split between two council offices, mm -hmm. CD5 and CD10. Right. We seem to get more calls first before the council districts do because we respond a lot quicker because when you're looking at CD10, it goes all the way from West LA all the way on the other side of town, from 10 freeway all the way to CD8. So it's a very large area. But when people want to be able to get things done, they call us first. And we respond right back. You guys have a telephone number with an answering machine? We don't have an office. Yeah, we, have, we use Vonage. We don't have an office we either because we don't want to spend money for it until the city gives us a city uh, office. We don't have a phone at this point. Okay. Be advisable to get a Vonage or Skype or Google phone. As long as there's a phone number, there's a, some sort of voicemail, for them to be, and to have somebody call them back within 24 hours. That's the most important, because you may not have the answer for them, but if you answer and call them right back, first they're relieved that somebody cares. Then the second part is, let me find out if we don't know the answer. And then that's where you, you elevate it up to more. How well of a relationship do you guys have? Because you're only in one council district. How's the relationship between you guys and the the deputy for your area. Uh, good, good. Good. You have two? Two deputies from one? Yeah, we Okay, so you do have that relationship in there. Okay, that's fantastic. Because some neighboring councils I've worked with, they have no relationship. And they've been there for years. It's just trying to pay for them. We don't want to have anything to do with them. Great, so we're going to do past things. Where do you think it's going to? Yeah. All right. So then start them on it. So this we'll get you having a conversation again to what Nick Maguire talked about, and that was the apathy. Right. So we have folks who will be interested in the. Uh, Are we talking on the board or on in the neighborhood? Both, or actually both. Well, there's two different ways to work on that, so that's why we really need to also provide if it's about board. Have you guys had a retreat yet? Yes, we had it. And how did it go? I don't know, that's fine. Did it bring everybody yeah. on the board? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. I see a lot of board members here, so I... No, we had a very positive outcome. Okay. Okay. So, but I, but I think, you know, the way that people get involved with the neighborhood council is on an issue base. So Absolutely. if it's a project that they want to get done, or money for a project, or they come to the neighborhood council because they have money. But never come to do the global picture of right. how can we improve Sereno and this neighborhood council and what is it, what else is there to be done. Okay. So we either start with the premise that everyone is gonna bring a project and then do the outreach that way, or that we just get you know one message about the, the more global mission of what this neighborhood council needs to be doing. Because the, the squeaky wheels are the ones that come to the neighborhood council who ask for things and who wants to get, get things done. You know, most of the neighbors who might have the problem with the platform and the, the trees, they're, they're looking at the neighborhood council saying, eh, it's another government kind of agency or group. They're not gonna do anything. They're doing that for you. That's because you're letting them identify you instead of you guys letting them know what your identity is. And that's one of the problems that happens with neighborhood councils is they let others identify who they are. If you show, like I said, having a phone number for people to call, being able to get back to them within 24 hours, and, and it's not really hard. We use Vonage and it comes as a text message to me, the because I'm the treasurer, the president, and the vice president, and we get to it almost immediately. It's just part of, part of what we've 
taken on, and it's helped to identify that these are the people we need to talk to to help. Yeah, I, I think just what you were saying about being brought up is about message. Okay, for example, with, with, with using the various social media, YouTube, right. I would say every once in a while, maybe your president and your neighborhood council needs to put out a video message to the community and update it on a regular basis. Well, I did that. Mm -hmm. And they did a very good one. Very good one. You could webcast your meetings. Yeah. 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 Those, right. those are things so to look at. Because right. I, I really want you to get this. You've got to get this document done. basically done and then get onto your budget or else you're not going to have money for a month. So all of these are pieces that will fit into this. And if you're getting into specifics, you know, so one of your goals might be to decrease the amount of apathy and then you go into how are we going to make that happen, okay? So we talked about the outreach and what we want to do. Well, start with the big, I mean, this well, is that they're going to want you to do this right. next well. Go ahead. Um, no, yes. No. Okay. Yes. But they've identified their, their big vision. Of it's the outreach. Okay, who can put that into some sort of a statement? For what you're going, and it can be several different things. It doesn't all have to be, you know, one thing. What's your big vision for the next year, from now until the time of your next elections? And remember, your elections are included in this time frame. So you're going to be doing outreach for your election. And you're going to have to put some money into that. Done. It's time to have to do that. Um, What's your goal for the next year? The big, the big picture. Not we want to mail in this, but the big picture. <laughs> so, oh, well, but, 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 this group go for it. Well, it's public comment, so I always let public comment go first. Sorry. That's right. not what that means. Because sometimes ideas go on. Okay, go on. So go ahead. Mind your mouth. No, the question was, uh, I wasn't sure if this was public comment. I know we've been jumping around from one item to another, so we're not actually yet doing Agenda, right? No, we're doing actually no, we're we're on agenda, agenda, but it's number three. Budget. Number three. Okay. okay. We brought that this forward. Of the budget process. Okay. I, I've got your little yeah. myself. Yeah. Right. Uh, I've been hearing right. a little bit of everything here. So. Right. Right. But that's what we're working on, though, so that we can create a vision and also a strategic plan to be able to put together a budget that then can be passed by the board. All right. Yeah. There was something talk about. Uh, uh, getting communities to work together. Yeah, absolutely. What partnership? And what holds us up sometimes is that there are uh, groups that are kind of a little negative on the aspect of the entire community mm -hmm. process. But you're, you're ahead. You're ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. So getting communities right, to work together. Stop. Okay. Get Thank it right. Thank you. That that's a big, okay. a big uh, picture thing. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the budget, right? We're, yes, what we're, we're the doing budget. is creating a strategic plan that will then feed into the budget. So once we're deciding, again, for example, he's saying getting communities to work together. All right, how would you do the next part of this will be, how would you do that? Like creating a newsletter, okay, fine. And then in the budget, we're gonna put in a certain amount of money to create a newsletter to help the communities get together. See what I mean? Well, and, and you make, that's why I'm trying to focus this and not get into the specifics. I just want to think about $2,000 for a website. No, 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 you don't have anything yet. There's no budget. Yeah, this is just a draft. Oh, it's just oh. a draft. It's just yeah. a draft. Oh, it's just a draft. Okay, there's nothing. It's valuable yet. completely. This is oh, yeah. It, it was just to give an idea. My, my, my question is um, just to make sure when you do, if you do redo your website, make sure that you manage it and you, you manage your own website, not somebody else. Right. Absolutely. You manage yeah. content. We're, 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 uh, okay. And we have a password, and that's yeah. right. that, that's not going to change. A master password. Yeah. Yeah, that's coming. Okay. Okay. So what did anybody else? Getting communities work together. What else? Why don't we mention outreach? Um, but one thing I wonder why I know Spanish is another language that we need to outreach in our translation. But besides the Spanish population, I mean, I went to schools here, but a lot of my friends were Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese. So we also have a population that we might need another language translation besides Spanish, um, Mandarin, or any other language we might need. I mean, do we have uh, demographics and statistics from the census to know how many there are in the? Um, we'll have to look. Okay, then that's one of the, who would be in charge? Because that's one thing. Not only to say it, but who would be in charge to go get that data? 
It's between two and four percent of the uh, uh, is it two or is it four or could it be more? I think, I, I, mean, I think the last instance that I saw, uh, 2010, and the, um, I think it's about 3.6. What you do is you go on the U.S. Census and you got to find out what the tracks are in your community. And I think they're they're actually identified in in the. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to suggest here. See, it says that this is what we're looking at. The big vision, the next thing is the big goals. So maybe one of the big goals would be increase participation by non-English speaking stakeholders. Would that be, would that summarize what you're saying? Well, increase the participation is by, by part of the big picture. What? But how do we get more the stakeholders big, to come? But that, that's not the big picture. This isn't one of the goals, all right? The big picture is basically Outreach. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, uh, out, out, um, what is it? It's in here. Well, getting communities to work together. That Correct. Right. That, that's one of them. Right. Um, promote more citizen participation in government and make the government more, more responsive to local needs. That's really what that means. Listen to your stakeholders, get them in here, and then represent them. That's the big, that's really the big picture. Um, and then how are you going to accomplish that? Not, not specifics, not we're going to mail out to 18 people, but increase participate, focus on increasing participation by non English speaking stakeholders. So that would be one of your goals. Okay? We don't need to get into how to do it yet, what the demographics so that's that's down the road. Okay? Do you think it would be wise to consider? Everything is wise. <laughs> Not every just give us ideas. Do you think it'd be wise? And I'm just simply saying, he would, he would, he'd rather have a template in place before you start going into these, you know, very diverse things. That's, that's what we're working to create. Yeah, that's, on, that's in response to the. We're, we're creating the template. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then as we go down this, it's going to get more specific. So, like, like using the. Uh, not English speaking thing. The next piece of this is going to be how, how are you going to accomplish that? Well, you know, have, to have a translator in four languages that are you know. Yeah. I have a question before you get to that. You know, uh, you can say it's down the road all you want or you're blue in the face. The reality of things is, in terms of getting stakeholders, especially the northeast part of Los Angeles, not the west. But you got a ton of doctors and lawyers and tons of money that they're willing to shout out to the neighborhood council. We don't have that here. The demographics is totally different. And how we operate here has nothing to do with how they operate in other neighborhoods. Sir, I have the floor. Well, you, Sir, you're I have the floor. Respect me. Topic. You speak when I'm done. That's well, fine. Continue your comment. But that's I'm not through with my comment. And he interrupted me. Okay. <clears throat> the thing is, uh, the details in terms of how you get people to come to our neighborhood council, this particular one, that's the $64,000 question. Okay, the outreach is extremely poor how we can get the word out to our stakeholders. You've been around here long enough assisting our president, sir, with all due respect, and I haven't seen anything benefit from having you here in terms of getting outreach and advising our president in terms of how to do things. Because that's the primary job on those have Wednesdays when we meet. Like sir, have you looked at your website Sir, like sir, you can say that yeah. when I'm done talking, okay? Right. But be respectful. Like See, it's not a personal no, because you interrupted me. That's the attack. But we want to focus on today and the outreach and finish. That's what I'm doing, but he interrupted me. And he's the one attacking me. So, so we have to get communities to work together as one of our big goals. Uh, increase non-English uh, speaking stakeholders participation. What else would you guys like to see to be able to help forward this outreach plan? Increase our stakeholder, uh, the board member meetings by 20%. You mean uh, attendance? Attendance. Oh, 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 increase the, the oh. attendance. For the board. By stakeholders. By stakeholders. Yes, yeah, so I appreciate what you said. Increase stakeholder attendance at, at the board by 20%. And see, by saying 20%, that's a measurable amount. Right? You'd say, okay, we know right now we have, how many company are meetings right now? 
30? About 30. That's a good number. So if you increase it 20%, yeah. Before the halfway meeting time on those Wednesdays, that 30% dwindled down to practically nothing. And there's still tons of, of paperwork to be done by the president. So that sounds pretty, but it's not a reality. Well, some of it could be that maybe the structure of how the meeting's conducted, that's something that we'll take a look at. Remember, we're brainstorming right now. We're going to see what it, what it takes and what we're going to do. So it sounds like part of it is structure of meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you might want to change 20% on because you talk about you have 30 people in your meeting. Yeah. Well, it's not yeah. six people. I'm going to go back. You might want to double. You might want to double. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well,